Okay, so we are not now on building panel four of the little one folio. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna build. Um, we're gonna start, we have this, this waterfall and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flaps. And this closure, the button tie closure. And then we have up here, we have these two flaps. And then we have this side pocket, just like um, panel one with this big booklet insert that fits in here. So that's what we're going to be building. So first you're going to start, and hopefully you already made it, you're going to do just like we did with panel one, make this back part where we can have um, our little pocket. Obviously this pocket is going to be open in this direction, like this. So, so this is going to be like a panel. And then we're gonna add our little a base page that we're going to apply to this just like we did with when we built panel one. So get this all prepared and then once you have that what you're going to do is cut your base. So this base is going to be seven and a half inches tall by ten inches wide. Put it in your scoreboard. Ten inch side up, score it at a half an inch nine and a half inches, fold and burnish. And what you're gonna actually do with these is just glue them down. Just gonna glue them down. I just like to have these rounded edges on the side. Um, I just like that. So just glue those down. We're not gonna do anything with these flaps. Then what you're going to do is you are going to cut seven pieces that are three and three quarter inches tall by five and seven eighths inches long. And these are seven pieces are gonna be for a waterfall. And then you're going to score all of them with the five and seven eighths inches long on top, half an inch and then you will fold and burnish each of those. So go ahead and get those done and I will be right back. So you are going to be attaching your waterfall pieces to what I call a waterfall base. It is going to be the same height, three and three quarter inches tall. The length is eight inches plus. We're gonna be cutting it off Anyway, but eight inches or bigger is fine. Um, so what we're going to do, you have all your seven pieces folded, burnished, and score tape added. What you're going to do is you're going to line up the first piece, put it on this base, get the, the top to bottom lined up, pull your first your first waterfall piece and put that down. And then the rest of them, you are going to be building it like you normally do a waterfall. Put it down. Make sure this is even with this. And if it is, it should be even with this when you put it over. So you are just following the lines top to bottom here as you're building it. Pull the second one. That looks straight and then you just keep on going. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these.
So there you have your waterfall in. And just go ahead and give each of those a good burnish after you're done. And the good thing about when you're building a waterfall on a, a little base like this, if you if your edges aren't completely straight, when you put it over, you can take it to the trimmer and trim trim it off and make it completely straight. Mine look pretty good. And especially if you do it on craft cardstock, you're going not going to notice uh, uh, notice much at all. So that is the waterfall. Um, when you put it into this base, now this base I already I folded that those half inch square marks and I glued them down. So those are down. So this waterfall, but before you put it down, what you're going to do is once it's in there, go ahead and mark the end of where you want to cut it off. So I cut it off at the very end. I just go over this last, um, this last little waterfall piece that we put down. I just mark it right there and I'm gonna put this in my trimmer and cut it right there. So that's what I'm going to do. So you have your waterfall built on its base complete and you've cut the base to the same length as this last waterfall piece. So go ahead and find the center of this. Just put a, a pencil mark here. Find the center of this. Put that aside. And now you're going to make the closure. So the closure is going to be two and a half inches wide by approximately, um, I'm not sure what I made, four inches, four inches. That's approximate because you're going to be trimming this down. And then you're going to put it in your scoreboard, four inch side up, and you're going to score it at half an inch. And then you'll fold that, fold and burnish that. So next, what you're going to do is get your base. So here's your base. You're going to align your waterfall and you want to try to get the, this this um, reveal here of the base and here about the same so I'm going to put it around there make sure this is straight down here I don't have it all the way to the bottom I have just a little bit of reveal at the bottom um, like that so I'm going to go ahead, don't adhere it yet. I'm just going to draw a line here and then make sure that line is straight. And then I'm going to line this up. When I glue it in, I'm not gluing it in yet. But before we glue it in, we need to get our closure underneath this flap. So I went ahead and drew my line using um, my quilters ruler just so I know this is where I'm going to be putting this and it's straight. So I have my little bit of reveal down here. Now with this closure piece, you're, you've, you folded it, you've got your score mark, you folded it. You're going to find the center of this flap. So find the center and I go up into the card, into this part of the closure, and this is where you're going to be putting, putting it. So you have the center of the waterfall and the center of this closure. And I just have enough space between the fold edge and the end of the waterfall so it doesn't catch, so it goes over easily like that. Once you find where you want it, so this is where I want it. You don't have to be as precise as me. I just like to draw lines. Then you're going to fold it over and you want it to come up to this first waterfall. 
let me show you what I'm trying to do. So here is the first waterfall page right here. Here's the closure. So the way that I have them is these are like right there. This one's actually just a little bit on top of this one. Um, so you can have them either right next to each other or this one's just a little bit on top of this one. And actually, I like that better. It's a little bit on top, but let me show you how it is. See that? That's the way I, I'm going to try to get the other one just like that. So it does clamp down on the lip of the first waterfall like that. So let me, let me redo my mark. Get this lined up. And I want just a little bit on top of this one right there. So I'm going to cut it right here. That's where I'm going to cut mine. So I cut mine and put it in. And you still have some wiggle room with this. So once you put it in, you line it up and that's about where I want it. This is lined up with this line back here. And the other thing I did is I rounded the corners on here and I rounded the corners on all my waterfall pages. So I'm just going to go, before I attach it down, I'm just going to go in and round all my corners of the waterfall and round the closure also. So I'll be back after I round everything. So I rounded everything except for the very last part, which is the base build. So what I'm going to do now is add this little flap. I put some Beacons 3-in-1 glue there. So I'm going to put it under this base where we built our waterfall. And I'm going to line that up with the middle of the waterfall. And I have some wiggle room with this glue. and see if this is where I want it. That looks pretty good. So then I'll just adhere this down. So now the closure flap is, is attached. So now we have this whole unit. So with this unit, what I do is I just put score tape all along the edges of it and in between and then some glue and then I line it up here, leave a little bit of reveal down here and I'm going to glue that in. So that's what I'm going to do. Before we glue this down, because I just did, and I go, oh my God, I forgot something, and I've actually torn my paper now. Um, but you won't do that, because I'm gonna tell you what to do. You need to add your designer paper back in here before you glue this down. So you, you can put this down to find how high up you need to add your designer paper. So I went, a little bit above this and let's see how did I do my designer paper yeah about right there so let me measure how I did it on mine so you can see this green striped designer paper it is about how how tall it is Four and four and a quarter, four and a quarter. So I'm going to put some um, designer paper back in here that's four and a quarter inches high and the proper length here before I put down my waterfall. 
So we have our closure, our waterfall closure made. We've rounded all the corners, we've attached it. And I did not round the corners on the base page that we built. I left those square. So before we attach this to our back panel here, you're going to be cutting a piece of designer paper that is the green stripe this one and it's going to go here so let me show you you can see the green stripe paper behind this waterfall hopefully you can see the green stripe behind the waterfall so this is going to be i believe four and a quarter inches tall so it's a four and a quarter inches tall and then you're just going to cut this to the right length. I need to trim off some here. And then I'm going to attach this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I laid down my designer paper. Remember, this is the green stripe that goes back in here. Um, about four and a quarter inches tall, and then get your your width. Now you're ready attach, to attach your waterfall piece. So I put score tape on all around the edges, and then I usually put some score tape in here and fill it in with some glue. And then you're going to get this lined up so you have the same amount of green reveal here as here, and make sure it's straight top to bottom, and then you're just going to adhere that down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So for our two top flaps that we're gonna be putting up here, you need to cut two pieces, each five inches long by two and three quarters inches wide, and you're going to put them in your scoreboard. Five inch side on top, Score half an inch, score half an inch, fold and burnish real well. And for the edges of these, these are going to be going in like this. But for the edges of these, I'm going to go ahead and use my scallop punch. So that's what I'm going to do with these. If you do not have a scallop punch, um, you're going to need to trim these a little bit because you want a little bit of reveal in between them. So you may have to shorten the length and then just round the corners, round the, these edges. But I'm going to put them in my, my Martha Stewart scallop punch. So I put them in, and this is how it turned out so that's about right like that that's how I want them so of course before we put these down did I yes I added um, the designer paper back in here so let's see what we did so before we put in our flaps, number one, we need to add some designer paper. So I used this, this Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This is from the 12 by 12. It's this strip right here. And I just affixed that the same length as the green stripe paper. So you just cut it and then affix it right next to the green stripe paper. Then you're going to get the brown dotted paper. And let's see, it doesn't matter if it's, can it be the eight by eight? No, it can't be from the eight by eight because it's a little bit longer. So it's gonna be from the 12 by 12. Pretend this is the brown dotted paper. Um, you know which one it is. You're going to fit that in same length as the green stripe paper and you're going to put that in here and I had just a little bit of reveal 
above the twinkle twinkle little star and then you will just cut it to the right size to the right height and it's going to be approximately two and almost three it's one sixteenth less than three so that's what I have but you you measure yours because it depends on um, how far up you did this green stripe paper so I'm going to go ahead and put this in and then put this in before we put in our flaps okay so I put in my twinkle twinkle little star and then I added this this paper this is supposed to be the brown dotted paper from the 12 by 12 so I got that in here so there's just a little bit of reveal between the twinkle twinkle little star and the brown dotted paper from the 12 by 12 collection then you're going to put in your two flaps so when you put these flaps down you're going to what I at least what I did I found the center of this back base page and marked it with a pencil so I kind of know I want this a little space in between here um, about maybe what is that um, a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch or so because what we're going to be doing is adding these pull tabs so we have a pull tab here and you want it to lie in that space that quarter inch space and then you're going to have a pull tab on this side lying in that space so if they're too close together they'll be overlapping the flaps so I'm going to put them about like that and put those down obviously again use glue and tape to put your ribbons in so one there and one here and the other thing we're going to need is magnets now the way I put my magnets I put a magnet here and a magnet here so we're going to put our um, our small basic gray magnets one here and one here so I have my my basic gray small magnets one here and one on this side I'm going to transfer their counterparts to the inside here Oops, I took this one off. That one goes back over there. And transfer this one over. Now, um, once you transfer these over, you go, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Because now we have this paper that has been put with with uh, magnets. So what I did is I got this strip of paper that you just cut from. You just cut the twinkle twinkle little star. You're going to cut this section from the green edge, from the bottom of the green to the top of the yellow. You're cutting this whole section out and you're going to be cutting putting that whole section after we get some more paper behind here. Let me show you what we're going to do. So we have that brown dotted paper here. We have that brown dotted paper here. I covered these flaps with the yellow solid so these yellow flaps right here, these flaps here, these half inch flaps are going to be covered with the solid yellow. And then I added the, that, okay, 
and you see it, I added this paper right here to cover the magnets. The magnets sit, let me show you where the magnets are. There's a magnet, there's a magnet. Those are where the magnets are underneath that strip. And I put the strip a little bit above the, um, a little bit of reveal of the, the brown dotted paper, see that? So that's how I covered up these magnets. So go ahead and cut that strip, um, put in the yellow solid, cut out that strip, and then cover up these magnets. And then you're good to go. You've got your, your magnet, magnetic closure there. For the inside of this flap, you're using the, the yellow star paper here, yellow star paper, get rid of this, and yellow star paper on the other flap too. And you have your, your two ribbon closures already in. So for these top flaps, you're going to be using the back side of the brown dotted paper the 12 by 12, and this is the side I use. Let me show you up close mine. I used that part with the little bunny that says, Oh Darling, underneath. And on this flap, I went for the love blocks again, and has that little bunny up in the, the right upper hand corner. But obviously, you can use any part of the paper you want. Obviously, I went and tapped down the pink again. I'll just show you. This is the, the 8x8. Here it is without being tapped down with the alcohol marker. And here is that same paper once the alcohol marker has gone in and tapped all the pink. So you can see the difference if you, if you want the gender neutral or boy um, look to it. So that was that was the paper I used there. So we have the two flaps done. You know where to put the magnets. You know how to cover up the magnets at the bottom. Now we're going to go down to the waterfall. So we are going to cover the top part of this waterfall this one right here with this paper from the 8x8, the baby rattle paper from the 8x8. So you're going to go ahead and put the baby rattle paper from the 8x8 here. And then you're going to put the, um, the brown dot paper, doesn't matter if it's 8x8 or 12x12, whatever you have, you're going to cover this little closure flap. So once those go in, you're going to make your button tie closures. Once again, use what I used was my three quarter of inch punch, cut out three um, 65 pound cardstock circles, glued them together, inked their edges, and for the green dot that I put on top of this one, I used my 5 eighths of an inch punch and I cut it from, this is the cover sheet, I cut, I cut it from right here where it has the green dots. That's where I cut it from. So that was this one. This one, I cut this little bunny, if you can see him, this bunny, it's the 12 by 12 sheet. I cut this bent bunny from here. That's where this bunny came from, right there. Inked the edges on all of these and then found my center, used my pokey tool to make a hole. And now we'll just put a brad in those.
guys probably already know how to do this. Uh, since I showed you on another video, I think, I don't remember which video it was, but I showed you how to make these. So where are we going to put these? We are putting it, obviously you're gonna find the center of each of these flaps. We're going to center it. And it, this one is going to be an inch in from the edge. This one is an inch edge in from the edge too. So I'm gonna mark it mine on here and I'll be right back. So I marked my front part of the waterfall one inch in and one inch in and this is the center. So I'm going to put a hole here. And then I measured one inch in on this closure flap, found the center and there's where they cross. So I'm going to put a hole here. Remember, you already have your designer paper, so you're you're going to be putting through these through the designer paper. So the, I have the green dot going through the the baby rattle paper right here. You're going to open those wings. Flatten them down with either your tool or your bone folder and put a little piece of tape back there. Go ahead and put the bunny, bunny button through the hole here. This is the brown dotted paper. Put that through. Open your wings. Flatten those wings. And this one, before you put your tape, make sure you got your bunny facing right side up. Put your tape down, and there you have your tie um, closures. So then you're just going to add your your string, like we did in video one, to to close them off. So if you don't remember how to do these, just review um, video one. I go through the whole thing on how to make these. So you have your designer paper here you have your designer paper here on the back of this paper you're you're going to be using you're going to be using this paper from the 8x8 so that's going to go behind here so let's just look at this so we have our baby rattle paper from the 8x8 the brown dotted paper this paper from the 8x8 goes behind the closure. It's going to be covering up the wings of your, your little um, button right here. Behind this paper, I use the same paper from the 8x8 collection. So that's going to be cut, covering up your button um, wings right here. Then for each of these half inch um, flaps, I just use various papers. I use the stripe, the green stars from the 8x8, green stars, stripes, green stars. Oops, I forgot to put one there. I use stripes or green, yeah, green stars. Here's a stripe. So I covered up those. And then for these, these are, these are all um, they're not half an inch, they're, that's four-eighths, this is five-eighths of an inch. Five-eighths of an inch, little strip on each of these little areas right here. So five-eighths of an inch. This is the eight-by-eight eight paper, the flower. Eight-by-eight eight paper, the flower. The, the brown dotted, doesn't matter if it's eight-by-eight eight or twelve, solid yellow. 8x8 eight eight flower, brown dotted, yellow. So that's the pattern. Flower dot solid, flower dot solid. On the inside, 
it's going to be solid dot flower, solid dot flower. And again, I tap down the pink and the flower with my alcohol marker. The inside base that we built our, our waterfall on is the star paper from the eight by eight. So that's just the star paper from the eight by eight. So that's in the back. And then I cut a scallop circle from one of my dies. This is three, about three and a quarter inch diameter. And then I used the Winnie the Pooh ephemera um, piece that we have in our shop. Because my idea, remember, this was going to be using um, birth picture, one month, two month, three month, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this is going to be a picture at one years of age. Ooh, my throat just gave out. But you can do anything that you want with this waterfall. And then I used one of the charms that Julie will send if you you use our um, get our bundle. And I used the, boy, my throat. <laughs> I used this one, but she's going to send you multiple different types. So again, I use the figure of eight closure. And I think we got, did we get everything? I think we got everything for this. Then you're going to build your booklet. You're going to build it the same way you did with the others. Find the depth by putting in a ruler seeing how deep you need to, need to make it, and then figure out the width. This is mine. I used the, the brown dotted paper from the 8x8, the baby rattle from the 8x8. Doesn't matter how wide this is. This is like two and, two and a quarter inches wide. I used my little punch on the side, my scallop punch, and it's basically the opposite on the other side. I used the eight by eight dotted paper and the baby rattles. Added my little ribbon to the back side, of the back paper, because I always like to have these little ribbons. So this ribbon is underneath this paper on the back, just like we did on pen one. And then that just fits in here and it's easily pulled out by that ribbon. So now that you've completed your folio, this, well, this little piece, you're going to be attaching it to the base of the, this big folio, remember? <laughs> so this is panel, pretend this is panel four. This is actually panel one, but it's built the same. So you made your pocket. But the, what you're going to use for this pocket, you're going to cover it in this paper from the 12 by 12. So you will cut this, fit it on, get your edges cut out if you did use the envelope punch or you if you used your um, circle punch to make a cutout. Get that adhered. So you're gonna be using this paper Make sure you ink the edges. For the inner part of the pocket, you're going to be using the uh, brown dotted paper from the eight by eight, and you'll just cut it to the, the width that you need here. You only need a couple of inches. You don't have to make it this, this long, just a couple of inches, because you're just going to be covering up this spot. So you just need maybe whatever this is, two inches, I don't know, to cover that up. And then you do like we did with the other one. You add score tape all around here. I just kind of filled this with score tape and I centered it top to bottom, side to side and pushed it down. 
and then you're basically done. I also use some 3-in-1 glue to give it extra strength, but this, this one's not very heavy, so it should be fine. And make sure it's adhered down, you burnish it real, real well, and you're done with the folio, adding all the panels of the folio.